Hey everyone and welcome back to another hit film tutorial. It's been a long time, it's been a couple of months and I apologize for the lack of videos but I've been really busy recently. In that time we've actually passed 50,000 subscribers so I do want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed. Rather than doing a huge 50k special or anything like that, I thought I'd just get straight back into it for everyone and today we're going to be in hit film doing a green screen tutorial. Let's go ahead and start off by creating a composite shot. I'm just gonna right click, make composite shot. You can do this from a clip in the editor as well and just hit okay. This will just make it much easier for us to do the green screening. I think the very first step whenever you've got this green screen footage is to mask out the bits that you don't want. Most of the time you'll have the edges of the green screen in frame or in this case, we have this object here which we don't want in the frame. So to get rid of it, you can use a mask which is a shape telling the layer where it should and shouldn't be visible. We can use a rectangular, an ellipse or a freeform mask, which we're going to do right now. So just select your layer. I'm going to use a scroll wheel to zoom out a little bit and just right click and drag to drag around. I'm going to select the freeform mask tool and just click and drag if you want to have a curve point or just click to create points like so. And I'm just going to create a mask like this, making sure that everything except that object is visible in the frame. Now we're going to go back to our transform tool and we're just going to I'll go here and scale to fit. Okay, so let's go ahead and now do the green screening. Talking about green screening, there's three real steps to this process. The first is keying, getting rid of the green. The second is enhancement, making sure that our key looks good. And the third is to correct, to make sure that our foreground looks like the background. We're going to go through each of these steps today and each of them are equally important. So don't just do the keying, make sure you also do the enhancement and of course the correction to make sure you get a good looking key. So let's go ahead and start off with the keying. There are three main effects to use to key out your green in HitFilm. The first is chroma key. The chroma key effect, however, is only available in the pro version or with an add-on. So we're going to go and focus on the Express products. This is a really good tool, but this is an Express tutorial and there are really good ways you can key in Express, namely the color difference key and the hue and RGB key, which are good for different purposes. Let's start off with the color difference key. It's a super easy key to use and you just click and drag and most of the time it should be done immediately. But our key is pretty bad here. I've shot this pretty bad footage. So we're gonna to have to tweak with things a little bit more today. Once you've applied the effect, go into your controls and open it up. You'll see the screen color. In our case, it's green, but you can also choose red and blue. And you can also set a minimum and maximum value. Why have these two values? Basically, if you have any gap between these values, then it has this kind of soft area or this tolerance where some of it is gonna be keyed out and some of it isn't. We can see if we drag the minimum value all the way up to one, more and more of the stuff gets keyed out. And by the end, we're even cutting into some of the green areas of reflections or transparency of this jumper. So we're going to drag it back down again. And you can see if we go to a point like this and we drag this back, for example, and we make the difference between these really small can see what I mean by the tolerance area. If we're cutting off here and having no tolerance in between, then we get these really janky looking things where this is inside the key amount and this isn't and it doesn't look very good. The gamma basically adjusts both of these values at the same time. So if you just want to have a quick way to adjust both of them without adjusting the, the softness inside them, you can use the gamma as well. And another really important one is view mat. If we go back out, and I should say that you might have uh, in options here, you might have checkable background checked or unchecked. It doesn't really matter which one, but I'm going to leave it checked on for now so we can see what's transparent and what's black. But let's go ahead into view matte. View matte shows us an image where it's black and white. Everything that's white is visible and everything that's black has been completely cut out by the key. So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly drag the max here. And when we want to start green screening this, the first priority is to make sure that all of the green of our background is keyed out. So we just want to go and drag up the minimum until we can see that this area here, we all need it to be completely black. Otherwise, we're gonna have some stuff left in there. But you can see in dragging it all the way up to 0.98, we're actually cutting into our area here. And even if we try and drag this back all the way to 0.98 itself, to the maximum value, we still have some holes in here and it doesn't look very good. So if this has worked for you, great. But I'm also going to show you now why you might wanna use the hue and RGB key. Let's go ahead and delete this and let's go and search for uh, that hue and RGB key. Dragging it on, we can see that uh, by default, 
we have a different kind of color selector. If we uncheck the QNRGB key, go to this eyedropper and just click and drag, we can actually select a specific color of our green screen. Let's just select this value in the middle here because you can see that we have this dark stuff here and this bright stuff on the right, and that's why it's having a bit of trouble. So let's select a bit in the middle and turn it on. Tolerance in this case is going to be the amount of colors close to the colors we selected here that it's going to key out. So the more tolerance we have, the more it's going to key out. The less tolerance we have, the less it's going to key out. And we have a similar view mat here. So let's try a similar thing what we did with the color difference key. If we try and make the background completely black, then you can see we start to cut in heavily into this here. So what we can do is actually change the match colors by to RGB. This will change it from just the hue value, basically whether it's red, green, blue, yellow, orange, to all of the different color channels, which will take into account not just different values of color, but also the brightness when they're all combined together. You'll also notice a couple of different things happening with the kind of splotchy areas. If we go back to our hue here, you can see that our splotchy areas are quite blocky in nature, and we can see these really weird pixely kind of shapes. That's because we're only taking into account the hue data here. And because of the compression of our video, it stores less data for just the hue. If we switch to RGB, you can still see that we have some of this blocky compression, but in general, it's much finer and we have much more detail. So that's another reason why you might want to use RGB. Let's go back to scale to fit now, and let's increase the tolerance until we start cutting in to our jumper here. You might think that this has done an even worse job than last time because we still have tons of green on the sides here. But what we can do is we can now combine these keys. Let's go ahead and uncheck this key to make sure it's not visible. Let's go ahead and duplicate it with Control D on a PC or Command D on a Mac. On the second one, let's open it up, or actually before we open it up and check it, we're just going to drop eyedrop a brighter color of the area over here. Now when we highlight it, we can see it keys out all that brighter stuff, and this keys out all the darker stuff. And combined, we have a really smooth edge, but we also have all of this stuff keyed out over here. We can view the final mat here using this here. You can see that it's looking really nice and clean. I'm just going to duplicate it one more time, like so. Let's uncheck these guys, and let's go ahead and now select the darker areas over here. If we highlight it, we can see that they're keyed out. Let's view the mat to make sure it's all nice. I'm just going to decrease the tolerance a little bit like so. And now we're going to highlight these as well. And you can see we've got a pretty nice key. Okay, so now that we've got those keys selected, you can see there's still a little bit of some splotchy areas here and it's not 100% perfect. So this is where matte enhancement comes in. The first thing we can do is use a matte cleaner effect. Let's close up all of our keying effects and drag on the matte cleaner. The matte cleaner will help us to smooth, feather, and choke our matte. Let's go ahead and uncheck the view matte of this effect here so we get the key. And now let's check view matte here so that we can view all the changes we've made with the matte cleaner effect. The first thing we're going to look at is smooth, and that's going to actually be really helpful for our key here. Smooth will basically smooth out the shape of our outline. So if we just increase it, you can see that without really changing the shape too much, it actually just gets rid of those little bits and it makes it a lot smoother. You'll notice if we push it too much, then some of the corners start to get warped and stuff and the thin areas start to disappear. So it's very useful in some circumstances, in others, not so much. We're going to drag it down to zero and you can see that actually it's gotten rid of some of these areas here. That's because it's smoothed out the shape here and basically it's just gotten rid of them. And we can use this as a really helpful tool to just get rid of these areas here without changing the shape of our mat that much. So I'm just gonna set it to 13, and you can see we've gotten rid of all of those areas here, but we've still got a really nice key on the outside. I'm now going to show you the other two options. We're going to start off with choke. Choke basically takes in the edge and makes your selection smaller. As you can see with these holes here, it's really good for showing where you might have holes in your video because it basically just expands the holes. That's another way to think about it. Feathering will basically blur the edges of the video so we get a softer edge, not just a smoother shape, we actually get a smoother gradation from visible to not visible. If we wanted to feather this clip, what we could do is we could actually just go ahead and duplicate the matte cleaner effect, get rid of the view matte here, get rid of the smooth here and feather this. And that way it wouldn't take into account those holes that we had before. The final enhancement effect we're going to look at today is the spill removal. 
if we just drag spill removal on, you can see it kind of gets rid of some of these colors. These colors are these green colors that are caused by often reflections from the green screen onto the subject. In this case, our jump is actually a little bit transparent and so they're showing through. Usually this is a dead giveaway that you're green screening, so spill removal helps to remove those green reflections. If it's too much removal for you, you can go down to standard or you can just remove the strength. Okay, so that's all of enhancement and keying done. I'm also going to briefly touch on correction today. Correction is basically the process of making sure that your foreground looks like your background. Let's go ahead and drag on this background here. As you can see, if we just play back the video, it, uh, it's kind of just not fitting. And half of it is because of this terrible light that I've got on the jumper at the moment. But another half is that the colors just don't seem to match. You can use the scopes or the grading transfer tool, which is a pro only or an add on feature. But today we're going to be using the curves to try and correct these. We can see basically that there's this really strong blue sky and this blue cast, even on the pavement here, which, you know, pavement is normally naturally blue, but because of these reflections, our background has this kind of blue cast. So we can try to imitate that on our foreground. Let's go ahead and drag the curves effect onto our foreground, the green screen clip. Drag it on after all of your keying and let's go ahead and before we do the, the blue actually, we should try and do the luminance. Luminance is basically the brightness. And so the curves effect might be a little bit intimidating, but I'm going to give you a very quick rundown. You can think of the bottom axis, the X axis as your input, your original image and your Y axis as the output, the image that you're going to get as the final result of using the curves effect. Let's say for example, that we drag the curve up like this. As you can see, it's made everything brighter in our image. Let's take a breakdown of why this is. This is our input range from pure black to pure white. You can see that we have a mid gray value here. If we just follow this mid gray value here over to where it's gone on the Y axis, you can see that it's now become a 75% white value, meaning it's become much brighter. Also notice that the blacks here are still very black, the shadows. And that's because these black values are still just black and these white values are still just white. So if you can see this preset here, this is an S curve. Basically this creates contrast by making sure the bright areas are brighter and making sure the dark areas are darker. We can also show this by, for example, dragging this up. This will make sure that the pure blacks are mid gray now. So that's basically a rundown of how the curves effect works. Let's go and reset the curve here. And the luminance is actually pretty spot on. I'm just going to grab an S curve here and I'm just going to drag the highlights uh, up a little bit maybe, or I'm going to, because the whole image is pretty dark, I'm gonna make sure maybe a bit of it is more brighter like so. And that's our luminance correction done. And now it's time for our color correction. As you can see, we've been editing the channel RGB, which is all of our channels. And when we edit all of our color channels together, there's no color change. But if we say go to blue, and we increase the amount of blue, you can see, well, it becomes much more blue. So let's increase the value of blue a little bit. But another way we can increase the value of blue is to get rid of the other colors. So if we get rid of red by dragging it down, and you can see it has this kind of weird green cast on it now, it looks a bit too cyan. So if we get rid of a bit of green now as well, we can have, we can have this really natural looking blue uh, that's added by adding blue and removing these two colors as well. Another couple of tips while you're green screening, you might want to add a lens blur effect onto your background. That'll make it look like you've, your camera has a shallow depth of field and it makes it a little bit more realistic. Although the lens blur effect does take quite some time to render out. So if you're in a rush, you can just use the standard blur effect over here. I would also recommend using motion blur on your clip here. When you're shooting a green screen clip, it's recommended you use a higher shutter speed, meaning that there's not much motion blur. That way you get a very clear outline. But because you can't really factor in motion blur into your keying, you can add it digitally or fake it afterwards. And luckily, HitFilm has a really good motion blur effect. If you just apply this to your foreground clip after all of your keying effects, then it'll add a fake motion blur and it'll try to recreate uh, the motion blur from your video. Although this, as well as the lens blur, will take even longer to render. So use this wisely and it can stuff up on some clips if you have a ton of moon as well. All right, so that's basically how to green screen in HitFilm. Thanks for watching this video. If you really enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the like button to let others know that you liked it and to help other people find it. 
You can also subscribe to my channel. I make tons of other hit film tutorials and other editing and visual effects tutorials like this as well. Either way, I will see you in the next video. Stay shiny. Bye.